Hello guys, in this video we are trying to figure out whether a process or a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. In case of exothermic processes, heat is simply released from the system into the surroundings, so the change in internal energy is going to be negative, and also if we have a constant pressure process, the change in enthalpy is going to be negative. In case of an endothermic reaction, heat is absorbed from the surroundings into the system, so the change in internal energy is going to be positive and also the change in enthalpy going to be positive. So let's take a look at two reactions. So in case of the first reaction, the enthalpy change associated with that reaction is negative. And if we reverse that reaction, the enthalpy change associated with that reaction is going to be positive. So this simply means that in our first reaction, we are going to have an exothermic process where heat is released into the surroundings and in the second reaction we are going to have an endothermic process where heat needs to be added into the reaction for it to proceed. Now what happens in case of simple processes uh, when we are dealing with gases, liquids and solids? Well, think about how a liquid and the gas looks. So if we have a liquid, we know that the molecules are pretty close to each other, but they can move past each other, right? And in case of a gas, the molecules are really, really, really far away and they are just zooming really, really fast. So when you go from a liquid phase to a gas phase, let's say in case of water, you have a process that is called boiling or vaporization, right? So in this case, you have to somehow be able to separate the water molecules that are pretty close to each other to be further, further away from each other. So between the molecules, doesn't matter if it's a liquid, a solid, or a gas, there are forces that are so-called intermolecular forces. Now, when the molecules are close to each other, like in a liquid, the intermolecular forces are really, really strong. And in a gas, they are significantly weaker because the molecules are far away from each other. So you have to put in energy to separate the molecules from each other. Now, when we go from a gas to a liquid phase, we are going to have condensation. And in that case, the molecules just come closer, closer to each other. So the intermolecular forces, the forces between the molecules are going to increase. So what is a vaporization process? Is it exothermic or endothermic? Do we need to put in energy to separate the molecules? We do. So vaporization is going to be an endothermic process. However, when we are condensing water vapor into liquid water, that is going to be an exothermic process because the intermolecular forces, the forces between the molecules are going to increase. All right, let's take a look at a couple of more examples. How about boiling soup? Is it an exothermic or endothermic process? So when a soup is boiling, it's going from a liquid to the vapor phase, right? You are making a gas, basically. And you are heating up your soup on your stove. So you are putting energy into the soup. So this means that energy or heat is going to be absorbed, so we are going to have an endothermic process. Okay, how about making ice cubes or freezing? Is it an endothermic or exothermic process? Well, generally, if you compare a liquid with a solid, in case of a liquid, molecules will be able to pass each other, right? But in a solid, they have stronger forces with each other. They are kind of in one spot and they are just moving a little bit, right? Vibrating. So this means that when we are making ice cubes or freezing, we are going to have an exothermic process. All right, what's the next example? Frying eggs. Do you need to put in heat or energy to fry your eggs? 
you do, right? You have to heat up your frying pan. So again, heat is going to be absorbed by the eggs. So this is going to be an endothermic process. Okay, the next example is melting snowman. When would a snowman melt? It's actually a little bit sad, right? When the sun is shining on the snowman. So we are putting in energy into our snowman. So this is again going to be an endothermic process that needs energy or heat to proceed. All right. How about the candle flame? Well, we know that this is a process when you are burning something, right? And generally, in case of combustion processes, you are generating heat. So heat, in this case, is going to be released. So this is going to be an exothermic process. How about formation of snow in clouds? Well, this is the same as freezing. You go from a liquid to snow, right? Water vapor into snow. So again, we are going to have a process which is exothermic. Okay, how about hydrochloric acid mixed with sodium hydroxide and then the temperature rises? Just mix the two things together and you hold on to your beaker and it becomes hot. What happened to heat? Heat got released from your reaction, right, into the surroundings. So this is going to be an exothermic process. Now, how about producing sugar by photosynthesis? Plants photosynthesize, right? Do we need sunlight for this process? Definitely we do. So we need to add heat into this reaction to happen. So this is going to be an endothermic process. And our last example, how about water mixed with ammonium nitrate and the temperature drops? Well, this means that heat was absorbed from the surroundings into our reaction. So this is going to be an endothermic process, right? I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.